In this video, I'm going to show you the difference between a DVR versus an NVR. So I have here two four channel units sitting on our testing desk. And let's look at the DVR first. On the back, you'll notice it has these round BNC connectors. These are called coax BNC connectors, or short form is just BNC. And let's compare an NVR. On the back, it has these RJ45 ports that are PoE enabled ethernet ports. I'm gonna go with the easiest first and as to why a lot of people like PoE equipment these days. So I have a one camera setup. There's a gray cable here, as you can see, it's connected to a white pigtail right here. The cable goes directly from the back of the NVR into the camera and that's it. That's all you need to connect a camera. And then on the back of the NVR, you have a power connection for the NVR. This takes juice from your 110, puts it into the NVR, and the NVR then energizes your camera and communicates with data as well, all just over one cable. This is PoE technology, power over Ethernet. This is a LAN connection to your network, switch, or router. The blue connection is for your VGA, and the red connections are for two-way audio, and this little connection that's unconnected is for our HDMI TV and VGA is an old school computer monitor and then here you have a USB connection as well for a mouse so I have a little mouse sitting here to control my NVR so keep this in mind just all one cable now let's go look at a DVR now to connect one camera to a DVR in a professional way you need this big beige box which is called a power box so that needs a 110 connection on its own. And then the DVR has a power connection of its own too. So you need two 110 connections to provide power to the power box and the second one to the DVR. The power box connects to the camera through a cable that's called a Siamese cable. This is a Siamese coax cable. Of course, this length is about 25 feet. The other one was just a small six inch pigtail that I was using on my uh, IP camera, but here the Siamese cable has two connections on each end. The red one's power, the yellow one's video. Alright? So here's my connection. Let's explain how this works. This power connection right here sends power through the wire and out the other end into this red wire and into my camera. I hope you're following that as I'm traveling around the length of the wire. And then this yellow wire goes through the reel, comes back in, into the camera right there. So the camera has two connections, a B and C for video. Again, that's what the B and C connection looks like. B and C for video, 12 volt DC jack for power, sends it through the cable and comes out on the other end and connects into the DVR. And power to the camera is supplied from the power box right next to the DVR. So obviously you need a lot more. There's one accessory that you need, the power box, to power the coax camera. Some people use what's called a small power adapter. I'll show you that here. This is what a 12 volt power supply can look like. There's a small one on the left hand side that's a power adapter for just one camera and a larger one that says 12 volt like 4 amps or 5 amps for multiple cameras like 4 or 5 cameras. So when we compare a DVR versus an NVR, which one would you like to have? While everyone would go for a PoE system with an NVR and an IP camera or a PoE camera on there, the situation or the choice is not always very clear. It all depends on whether you have existing cabling, how long are your runs, how much do you want to spend, etc. But one of the most common myths with IP camera is that people believe they need an internet connection for the cameras to work. While that is true for cloud cameras you get from Ring or Arlo, etc., these professional cameras do not. This camera is actually producing video into the NVR without the need for an internet connection. And I'll show you that in just a second. The same thing is happening here in this coax camera. 
it is providing a video connection to the DVR without needing an internet connection. I'll show you, that, show you that in the next half of the video. So the most common myth being that you need an internet connection on an NVR. Let's explore that first with a DVR. I have a DVR, coax cable, Siamese, power box, connected to my coax BNC camera. I've got video pulled up on my monitor from it. No internet connection needed. I'm waving my hand and you can see it being waved in the back of the video. Just to show you I'm not playing any magic tricks there. So everybody thinks that you need a coax camera to be able to do that. Well, I'm gonna show you something. I'm switching my video input there on my monitor in abracadabra. I'm gonna show you that no internet connection is supplied to the back of this NVR. Nothing is connected. There are no blinking lights, no internet connection, and voila, I got video right there from my camera. Let's bring this up in full screen mode. There you go. And I've got the camera sitting here. I'm waving my hand and you can see me waving it. It's pretty real time. So that's simplifies and demystifies that question that you need internet connection for IP cameras. So do you? Not at all. Now, when you compare DVR versus NVR, no one really talks about latency. Coax cameras send an analog signal. It's pretty real time. So when I wave my hand, it's gonna be immediate. I'm gonna do that in a second. While I'm on the NVR, let's inspect that as well. I'm waving my hand right now in front of it. There is a delay, let's try that again. See that there's about a few milliseconds. Now. Now. There, there you see that. There's that delay there. Now switch my screen to my DVR. I'm going to show you that again. See that? It's instant. That's the difference there. So if you have an application that requires you to have no latency, no lag in the video from when the motion is happening in real life, then coax cameras are the way to go. You can have this wire be even like a thousand feet long, no latency. With IP cameras, there's latency because it's a digital signal, it's getting transcoded in the NVR and then being displayed to you in the monitor, that's another point of transcoding. It all introduces delays there. So that's one of the main differences. However, despite that latency, the image quality on an IP camera, for example, a four megapixel versus a four megapixel coax, the IP camera is clearer based on our testing. It is 2022 based on our testing so far I showed that to be very true, that IP cameras perform better, produce a better image quality than a coax Coax cameras always have a little bit more encoding issues there. They have some artifacts in their video. But coax cameras tend to run cheaper. The DVRs are cheaper. And um, their cable, outdoor rated coax, is actually cheaper as well. You can find this outdoor rated coax or Siamese cable ends up being a lot cheaper than an outdoor rated network cable. So that's another third point to consider. The fourth point is that the cables, how long they can be run. So like I mentioned, you can even have a thousand foot coax, Siamese. You can in fact actually have up to 1600 feet of Siamese cable with our HDCVI cameras and still get video signals across. Power is a different issue that you gotta make sure that you can get enough amperage to the camera. Usually people supply power from a distance closer than 300 feet to most cameras. But there are ways around that. Like for example, you can run a 24 volt signal down converted to 12 volts, includes a little bit more um, accessories you'll need to do that, but it's harder to do, but it's more versatile. An IP camera is usually limited to about 328 feet for most systems. There are some systems we carry where you can actually have distances up to 900 meters for PoE transmission, but it limits the amount of data you can have throughput there and also the kind of cameras you can use. For example, if you're trying to send a video and data signal and power signal to a pan tilt zoom camera, 
they usually require about 20 watts of power. I'm trying to send that 900 meters over a thin Cat 5e cable or Cat 6 cable, not going to happen. You need to provide power to the camera locally and then just use network cabling to send the data over. It's really tricky. So PoE power transmission is really only good for fixed cameras like this. These are both called fixed cameras because they're small little teeny tiny cameras with fixed lenses. They don't move around or anything like that. They'll work on those 900 meter, uh, 900 meter extended PoE systems. Analog cameras have an advantage over PoE cameras. You can use, for example, high wattage pan tilt zoom cameras and have them be sitting about 1,000 feet away, provide power via 24 volts AC or local 110 power, or use a thick gauge cable like a 14 gauge or 12 gauge to run the 24 volts AC to the camera, and then also get that video signal through the Siamese as well. So again, that's another difference. Hopefully this gives you some pertinent information to make a good decision on which kind of system you'd like to buy. If your system is really only for a home and you're doing a whole new system, no existing wiring, or you have a small business, and your distances are not more than 328 feet, go with a PoE and VR. If you're doing this for a large facility, large warehouse, storage facility, etc., you may want to consider a BNC system. If you have existing cabling, a lot of coax everywhere, there's no reason to pay someone to redo all that cabling. Just use a coax system. It's good enough. Hopefully this gives you good insight into what kind of system you should be buying, whether a BNC-based DVR system or a Cat5 PoE-based NVR system. Thanks for watching. If you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe.